uh, in the previous set of videos, uh, we went through double and triple integrals as well as some examples associated with them. Now, today uh, we are going to address uh, coordinate transformations. Uh, these coordinate transformations are important in uh, solving or in uh, evaluating some complex integrals. For example, in this case, in this endeavor, uh, our attention is focused to these three coordinate transformations in particular. First, polar coordinates, which is uh, used in R2 in two dimensional space. Uh, when the domain of integration is a circle, uh, this transformation is always useful. Because uh, once your domain of integration is a circle, it is extremely hard to I mean, find limits. Even though you can find limits, it is extremely hard to evaluate the integral once you are restricted to rectangular coordinate system. Therefore, in that event, we use polar coordinates. Remember, the domain of integration has some circular shape. It should be, a, it can be a circle, or it can be some kind of a sector, portion of a circle, or something like that. Uh, then polar coordinates are useful. The, the second one is cylindrical polar coordinates. Cylindrical polar coordinates are used when you are in R3. And the domain of integration is something like a cylinder or a portion of a cylinder. The third, spherical polar coordinates. Spherical polar coordinates are used when you are in R3, when the domain of integration is a subset of R3, as well as uh, it is a sphere or it is a portion of a sphere. For example, hemisphere or some portion of a sphere, then spherical polar coordinates are very useful. Without sphere, uh, spherical polar coordinates, it is extremely hard to evaluate that integral. Okay. Now, we will move to uh, the first one, part A, polar coordinates in R2. Now, if you consider, now we are familiar with rectangular coordinate system. So, this is a rectangular coordinate system. It looks like the atlas like these lines can be understood as uh, uh, longitudes and uh, latitudes. Hmm? So, it is like an atlas. On the other hand, if you consider a globe, if you look at from the top, the north pole looks like this. Hmm? Now, this is the polar coordinate system because of that, because, because this looks like the north pole. The longitudes and latitudes look like this, this is a north pole. Therefore, this system is called polar coordinates. Remember, here, if you move along this line, always if you move horizontally, y is constant. If you move vertically, x is constant. In that case, if you move along this circle, rho is constant. Rho is the distance from the origin to any point on the plane. Here, for example, if this is R 1, then rho is 1 along, uh, I mean on this circle. Here, rho is 2 on this circle. Right. On the other hand, theta is the angle measured from the positive direction of x axis in anticlockwise direction, like we usually measure angles in trigonometry. So, this is 0. On, on this line, on this portion of the line, theta is 0. Here, theta is 5 by 6 or 30 degrees. Here, it is 5 by 3 or 60 degrees. Here, it is 90 or 5 by 2 radians, like that. Hmm? Uh, now, if you move further, like if you take uh, the polar coordinate system, you can see uh, this distance is rho. If you take any point here, uh, the distance from the origin to this point is rho. The angle 
the anti-clockwise angle from the positive direction of x is theta. Right? You can see if you want to increase rho, right? Rho is the distance from the origin to any point on the plane. So if you want to increase that, that distance, you have to move further away like this. You have to move further away. So if this is rho, the direction which increases rho and the unit vector along this direction is denoted as rho hat. Similarly, this is theta. So without changing the value of rho, or on the other hand, without changing the, di the distance from the origin to this point, if you want to increase theta, you have to move along this direction. So that is, if, if you take the unit vector along that direction, that is called theta hat. Because that is how without changing rho you increase theta. Here without changing theta you increase rho. Again, if you go come back to I mean if you come back to the rectangular coordinate system, like if you move this way without changing y, you change x. That is the direction that is the vector i. On the other hand, if you I mean without changing x, if you want to change y, then you have to move along this direction. That is a vector j, this is vector i, this is vector j. Hmm? You can see they are mutually perpendicular. Here also they are mutually perpendicular. Rho comes first, therefore we call it as rho theta coordinates. Like x, y coordinates, rho comes first, because you can see the orientation. Hmm? From rho to rho hat to teeth hat, the, the angle is 90 and you measure in anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, rho comes first, theta follows it. Hmm? So, it is uh, rho theta coordinates. Now, what is the infinitesimal element or the area of the infinitesimal element in this coordinate system? Now, we will see. You take any point on the plane, the distance from uh, the origin to this point is rho. That means, uh, the first coordinate is rho. Now, if the angle from the x axis to this line is theta and uh, it is uh, rho theta, the, po the coordinate here is rho theta. Now, if you increase rho infinitesimally by delta rho, now this length is delta rho. Similarly, you increase this angle by an infinitesimal amount. If this is theta, that infinitesimal amount is delta theta. So, this angle is delta, delta theta. Now, this distance is rho. Therefore, the arc length, this arc length is radius times the angle. That means, rho times delta theta. So, this is rho times delta theta. This is delta rho. As you can see here, this is delta rho. Now, as now this is not a rectangle, but as delta theta, if these two quantities go to 0, this becomes smaller and smaller and you can see that it becomes, it has a shape of a rectangle. Therefore, uh, under this condition, the area of the infinitesimal element becomes, when they are, they go to 0, we replace them by d rho and d theta. Therefore, the area is rho d rho d theta, rho d, I mean rho d, d rho, sorry, rho d theta times d rho. So, this is the product. So, that is the area of the infinitesimal element. Now, let us do a very simple example, go through a very simple example. Let us find the area of a circle with radius r. We know what it is. It is phi r squared. The radius is r. Now, if you use uh, double integral and the polar coordinate system, here you take this as rho, the distance. Uh, you give a little increment, that is delta rho. This angle is theta. 
give a little increment to that as well that is delta theta. We know that the infinitesimal area of the infinitesimal element is rho d rho d theta as as I explained earlier that is the infinitesimal area of that element. Hmm? Now, you can see that when you move <coughs> inside this circle, the maximum distance you can achieve is r, minimum is 0. Therefore, rho varies from <coughs> rho varies from 0 to r. At the same time, theta, right, theta goes from 0 to 2 phi. Now, uh, this is the infinitesimal area, you integrate it in this coordinate system. <coughs> the rho vary, I mean the va first variable rho uh, and this integration, this integral sign associates with as we saw in the previous uh, videos with this one. So, uh, the limits of rho from 0 to r, limits of theta from 0 to 2 phi. So, first you focus to this one, uh, variable of integration is rho, therefore, rho squared over 2 is the integral, Lim then you substitute limits, you assign limits, then uh, you keep the other parts intact. Now, when you plug in limits, you get r squared over 2 minus 0, so I ignored it. Now, this what you have as your integrand theta is the variable of integration. Now, uh, you, this is a constant. So, r squared over 2 times theta is the answer. Limits are from 0 to 2 phi. Now, you plug in limits. This is what you get. Then, uh, these two, there are couple of twos. They, are, they go away, leaving this as the answer. And we exactly know what the answer is the answer is phi r squared and that is what we got. Hmm? So, we need to go through similar examples uh, later, we will do them in the next video. Okay, thank you.